was so loud. Hey guys, it's Vivian the Psalm next door. Today we are going to be covering my wines for New Year's. First off, I got a wonderful present for my friend and it's some new wine glasses from Gabrielle Glass. It's an Austrian company, I believe. It's an elegant glass for all wines. Medium sized, elegant and affordable. So that's very exciting. Ooh. So the game plan for New Year's is that a few of my friends and I are gonna go have dinner and then we're gonna come back to my place and we're just gonna, you know, drink some wine and be merry. Now, when I have people over, my rule of thumb is that I have one wine per person. Just planned. Not always that we will drink all of those wines, but I, I just need to have a plan just in case it gets to that level. So I kind of want to take you through some of the wines that I have. There was going to be a wide variety of price levels and quality levels. And honestly, that should be the case because especially if we're going to be drinking for, you know, multiple hours. This is pro tip, you guys. This is pro tip. At the end of the night, you should not be drinking your nicest things. That's the rule of thumb. Why? Because... Typically at this point, you are at wine tasting fatigue and you just don't appreciate it that much. So I typically like to have some bottles that I am not as attached to. Also, this is obviously, we're, I'm not going to be drinking this on New Year's because I'm drinking it now and that's just rude. I'm drinking a Blanquette de Limoux which is from the Languedoc. It is made champagne style, just not with champagne grapes. It's very fun, it's refreshing, it's fizzy. It has a little bit of apple note to it. This was less than $13, not that expensive. So that's what I'm drinking right now. The first wine, also you don't wanna have the nicest because it's probably gonna go pretty quick and this is one that you have seen before and i i stand by my decision that i think this is a great wine for its price and it's not a champagne but it is the schramsberg blanc de blanc this is a california champagne style wine so blanc de blanc means that it is made with 100 percent chardonnay and i think i'm going to start off with this and i think also because it's a blanc de blanc it is the most crisp so this is probably my middle of the pack sparkling wine because again we don't want the nicest and we don't want the worst the first wine then i think what i'm gonna do is stay in the the blanc the blanc realm and i'm gonna go with my first champagne my first champagne is a grower champagne a grower champagne is basically a small producer who grows their own grapes so a lot of the champagne houses they source their grapes from different growers. And I highly recommend grower champagnes because you actually get very good quality and for a fraction, usually a fraction of the price of very famous champagne houses. And I would say grower champagnes are much more like burgundy in the sense that they're more terroir driven. This one, unlike other champagnes you will notice, has the vineyard, but that is where the grapes come from for this wine. I highly just suggest going for a grower champagnes. I know it's not a Veuve or a Krug or a Boulanger or Tanger, but most people just don't really know. And also, like, I think it tastes amazing for the price, so I really recommend grower champagnes. The champagne that I spend a little bit more money, but not crazy crazy because, you know, I don't feel like blowing like a hundred plus dollars on a champagne. I was looking. I was. I'd rather have more wine than less wine. Like more good quality than like one really good one. So I looked for, you know, good entry level champagnes. Pierre Carasamon is the oldest continuously run family owned champagne house. This one, unlike the other two, are not Blanc de Blanc. When there's more Pinot Meunier and Pinot Noir, it is a little bit more riper fruits and a great entry wine. So that's his number three. 
on game day, we gotta decide, do we need five sparkling wines or do we just need four? I'm gonna get the temperature of the room, but we have two options. So I have Cava. This one is Blanca Perez. It is a Cava. This is made same method as champagne, but it is on leads for a less amount of time. It's quite affordable. This is an option. Or we can go to Gruet. So I visited Gruet in New Mexico. I actually am not really sure if I tasted this wine while I was there, but it is made champagne method. I asked them while I was in the tasting, I was like, so do you guys grow all the grapes here? in New Mexico, in the High Plains, and they're like, oh, just the Chardonnay. And then if they need Pinot Noir or Pinot Meunier, they get it from California. And I was like, ah, 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 I see. Which is why they don't have like an AVA on here. But it is interesting that the Chardonnays do come mostly from New Mexico. There were some pretty good ones out there, I will say. And especially as the quality goes up, it did get more expensive. So this entry level one, I am not so sure, but this one also came to $15. I do not know if I need both of these, but we'll find out. Back up on back up. So those are my sparkling wine options. Okay, so then I was gauging my audience and I feel like my audience is very red wine heavy. As we transition to our red, I think we have to start with the best red because again, we might be three to five wines in and we are approaching wine fatigue for some. So again, as I scan the room, I may open this or may not open this. I would like to. So Inglenook, super, super OG Napa winery. They've been around since like the 18, since like the 1880s, pretty old. You know what's funny? I, I, I went into the wine shop and I was just looking around. One of the sales guys, he comes up and he was just like, Ingle Nook. He's like, I thought only 50 or 60 year old guys like that. And I was like, maybe I am a 50 or 60 year old deep inside. Ingle Nook is kind of more Bordeaux style. I've heard kind of more classic St. Julien, which is left bank Bordeaux. So this will give you a lot more like earthy, leathery, herby vibes. It has still a nice backdrop of cassis, black cherries, and some chocolate in here. So I'm pretty excited for this. I think five years have given it some time to smooth out a little bit. And um, yeah, I'm pretty excited to open this bad boy up. That is my first red. Who knows what number of wine that will be. And then I have some filler wines. How about that? Filler wines. You've seen one of these because I talked about it in my winter reds. But the first one, right? Cabernet Sauvignon from Colchagua. Again, like I was saying, just nice just have on the ready because you just never know. You know, can't go wrong with a Chilean cab. If we get to it, this will be number eight. You have to have a sacrificial wine and it doesn't mean anything bad for the wine. You know, we are approaching late into the night. So you want some wine that you're like, meh. This was just like on sale and I was just kind of piqued my curiosity. Garnacha and I think a little bit of Syrah in here. Honestly, I do not, not know too much about this D.O. Almanza. Sorry. Oh. I don't know where that is in Spain. All right, those are the wines that I'm gonna be ringing in the new year with. Please comment down below of what you guys are gonna be drinking and also what other topics that you want me to cover. Please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. And cheers, you guys. I'll catch you guys later.